And now I would like to call upon Mr. Tamir Nimir, who has who holds a portfolio of um, preservation of sites in Jerusalem. And previously, the deputy, the deputy mayor. Let me just say yes. Also, I also in the past again, I was a deputy actually mayor till about a month ago. So, and I was uh, the deputy for two and a half years. I'm very happy for this opportunity to listen to all of you and to refer to everything. Let me just f start off by saying, I don't think this is anything new. Again, bringing up this uh, topic, this issue, and the whole issue of archaeology and history. Um, again, since t time immemorial, it was has always been something of significance, almost political, I would say. Uh, if you go look back hundreds of years, thousands of years in all sorts of walls and engravings and what has been perpetuated, so much has been talked of. It definitely has an historical value, but also in terms of archaeology. So it's no surprise to me that uh, um, that sometimes cynical use has been made of archaeology to blur things, but also to think of what layer do we preserve? What kind of memory, uh, political memory, do we wish to leave behind, to place on the table for the tourists to see? And I think these are uh, questions that are always there. I, but I think the only solution that I can see in order to really bring to the surface um, a more, something richer, something of greater values is really to have the public participate, to have transparency, all the things that you proposed, that you all proposed. I think that is the way to bring about change. But let me say there's another layer yet that when you go into this complexity in, the, in that in many of the cases, as we know, and this also came up from your words as well, that those who actually carry out the excavation or fund the excavation or the stakeholders, it's either the antiquities authority that is studying some sort of uh, um, old ruin or some sort of entrepreneur, a private entrepreneur or the government that has you know, an interest, a very specific interest, whether it's financial, whether it's to pave a road or a political interest. But it is quite clear that there is an interest and there is also money there. And you brought up this uh, question and the question is, who pays for it? Is it the state? Does the entrepreneur pay for it? As we saw in the Givati uh, parking uh, lot. And um, this is, a you know, in the minute that you have that, uh, again, the capital uh, government connection or government rule connection, and this comes up because sometimes the government uses, again, resources that is ostensibly supposed to be public and open to all. We already start seeing a whole complexity of interests that I would not uh, like to see in this respect. I would like it to come from a much cleaner place. So how do we rectify the situation? And and I'm sure the, the state will not recruit itself in any situation. Definitely if a contractor wants to suddenly build his own private thing and suddenly finds antiquities under the hotel he wishes to build, so he wants to just get rid of them in order to build his you know, private uh, uh, building, whatever it may be. So how do we solve that problem as well? And you know, excav excavation, just like building, is always political, as I've said before already. And this came up uh, as well. And the question is, how can we propose some sort of a change in, you know, for, for, for every political e um, excavation and building? But I think the question is whether how do we have l let everyone join the party? And this is the broader question about the, the city of Jerusalem, generally speaking. Let me talk as an Israeli, as a Jew for a moment, who lives in Israel. Do we feel safe enough in the city, confident enough to give room to, to the Palestinians as well, not only to the Christians, but also to Muslims, Palestinians? I think, I think you, you talk about, again, you know, that very limited place that we are in. I think we're in a better place in the, than in the past, but I still feel that there are still so many scars. And it's, it's difficult to let go. It's difficult to say, oh, wow, there's room for everybody. Come on, join the party. You can be part of the, of the game. You can be part of the space. 
and and not feel th and we don't feel threatened if you're here again is it so we're still not there again it's about political um building or giving space it, it's it exists everywhere um you know it from both sides it exists and you talked about archaeologic excavation as a demolition as a destruction so there's this conservation that is like a demolition or destruction just uh, as, a, as a means and there is demolition for the sake of demolition as an objective so all kinds of demolitions um and ruins can uh, can be brought into the picture but i do think that when we come or at least what I would like to see when we come and to excavate something, I would like to see excavations, of course. But as I must ask, and he talks about the connection to nature, he talked about touching the world, touching love, touching nature. Uh, here too, I would be able to see, you know, touching gently, touching affectionately, touching sensitively everything that is found, and being very respectful of everything that is found. Any piece of archaeology, and again. It could be Muslim layers, Palestinian layers, Israeli layers, but it could be so many other connections as well. And again, the question is, what is the agenda? What is the interest, both of the entrepreneur, but also what is the interest of the archaeologist who is excavating? And in order to deal with it, let me get back to the story again of how we are able to change the law. So again, I'm trying to think of a solution already, but I think that this, you know, directive, how did you call it? Your Oh, this authorization, as you called it, yes, the authorization that the antiquity um, authority has that actually allows them to excavate without convening, without having the public have their say. Um, and if I had to choose a place where I would actually, you know, tackle this problem, this issue, and to try and create a new reality, it would be to change the, the bylaw or this authorization and to really, you know, place it into the law of building and planning. It has to be part of that. I think this will would will serve the interests of this process. It's not just to isolate it to the area of the Holy Basin, by the way. That would be a mistake. I think we have to expand a little. And to in order to uh, not to have conflicts of interest and to ask ourselves, how do we manage all the excavations in Israel that are always political, they're always biased, they're always having different you know, interests, uh, uh, interests at stake. And then I would say, then we might be able to think of a reality in which there is there are people who examine the excavation, just like in an academic study, you know, before you you go, you set forth there is an ethics committee. Somebody has to think about what will happen even before it takes place, you know, professional body and the public as well. And maybe again the process of a building permit is the way to go about doing this. Let me just say one final thing perhaps. Again, that picture of the toilet you showed, I mean, it, it looks very blatant. It's, it's, a, it's a bit insensitive. But I actually, I uh, read in the Shulchan Aruch of Halachic Law, which says not to, not to urinate to towards the east. Because the east is towards Jerusalem the, the, um, and somewhere holy. Um, that's what's written in, in, the, in, the, in Halacha, in Jewish law. And let me just say that there are people who, who want to, who professionals in, in preservation, who take it again to a place that I think is a bit problematic. Now, sorry if I take the phrase from Bibi, you know, the, the life itself. We also have to make sure of those, the living. We can't always, uh, always think uh, and worry about the dead, what was. We have to think of the living, so we have to urinate. What can we do? Uh, always to think with direction to urinate, how not to cause damage. It's true. Then again, there was a very sort of blatant or, or uh, distasteful uh, picture. I don't know who that that space that you showed, who it was, uh, when it was sacred, when it was holy, and for whom. But even when we talk about preservation, we have to find a balance. I remember there was a preservation committee. Um, I think you were with me with me there. And they wanted to move stairways. Okay, there was a building for preservation. They wanted to move stairways, three stairs, I think it was, just uh, uh, to, to the side, a meter aside to create a ramp. And the manager of the department uh, um, uh, refused. And I said, you know, with all due respect, you know, with all due respect to preservation, how can you object to create, to build a ramp for disabled just to move the stairs a little because we're moving at one meter? So you have to find the right balance, even when it comes to stairs, even when it comes to um, toilets and whatever it may be. 
Um, and we have to also remember that we have to take care of the living. Those people will actually come and visit the place and experience the place. I would like to see, you know, Jerusalem, generally speaking, as a, as a city that has much more contained, so much more can include so a greater variety, whether if it can allow, uh, you know, homosexuals and lesbians to parade in the streets or to allow the elderly or the disabled to walk around or to have kids walk around on safe pavements or whether if it is manifest through antiquities and exposure and enabling people to to be exposed to different ways is a very broad question here i think there's maybe a struggle or discussion or debate call it what you will on the national level which is so much broader than the question of archaeology per se and maybe it is manifest here in the issue of archaeology, but we have to think about practical ways of how we can go about, you know, planning or creating change in this area in many areas. But I, we have to, uh, you know, think of how to do it in a way that won't sort of topple it over before we even set forth. It has to be done with wisdom. Thank you so much.